Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I've got four New Zealand Sauvignons in front of me. Four from Marlborough, capital of the uh, world, capital of Sauvignon, uh, maybe. Uh, final ones from uh, Martinborough, actually, Wyra Rapper to give it its, uh, actually the Gladstone bit of Wyra Rapper to, uh, to be absolutely precise. Uh, but let's start in the Marlborough ones. Interesting. The first two uh, from the same producer, uh, but uh, so in vivo is the, is the regular one from these guys. But they do this one. Uh, the first one is called Bella. Uh, particularly drawn to it because my daughter's called Isabella. Um, but this one, 30% uh, less calories and lighter in alcohol. Um, so it's nine and a half percent volume as opposed to its uh, its brother, uh, the regular in vivo, which is um, twelve and a half percent. So um, so let's see how the light one gets on. Now, lower alcohol wines are enjoying something of a surge in popularity. Well, I, I don't know how, how you'd put it, but uh, it seems to be much more of a demand for them. Um, and maybe it's a reaction against uh, some of the top-heavy wines that uh, uh, that some countries and some producers in particular have uh, have treated us to in the last few years. Maybe it's just that we're trying to be a bit more healthy and have, uh, have less alcohol. Um, one of the problems is that um, how do you get the lower alcohol? There's a few ways. You can pick your grapes earlier, but in that case, they've got, uh, they're, they're maybe not fully ripe and they've got quite high acidity so they can be a bit of a butter clenching experience uh, an easy ways to dilute them um, so but then you end up with thinner flavors and then there are some technical ways where you can put them in various machines and uh, which actually extract the alcohol and then you can uh, put the component bits back together cheating well hey I don't know but uh, I'm not sure what, what how they've, they've done this one um, but um, from the smell of it it's on that slightly uh, underripe side it's got the, the bit of green pepper but it's got they certainly got the herbal grassiness that you expect from Marlborough Sauvignon. It smells pretty decent. Soft, gentle, um, perfectly pleasant. Um, and um, if I have a problem with it, um, it's more expensive than the regular one. So uh, are we are we having to get, get to this thing where by something with less alcohol um, to in order to fit into this category ends up costing more? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mm, not so sure. Let's try Big Brother. So this is In Vivo, uh, at, again 2011 from Marlborough. Uh, so the first one was 9.5%, this one is 12 and a half. This seems richer, more concentrated. I don't know whether it's the alcohol that's producing more uh, aromas coming through, extra ripeness from the fruit, or whether maybe the, it was the, the first one was made with slightly more dilute fruit. I'm not sure how they made it. I'll, I'll see if I can flash up a link so you can go and uh, examine it. But here, uh, there's much more. I get, I get more of the stony minerality coming through. It's almost as if there's um, maybe some characters in the first one that have, those characters haven't fully developed in the grapes. Uh, here, um, yes, I, I get that, uh, that fresh grassiness with a bit of weight behind it, stoniness, citrus, um, maybe, uh, yeah, on that citrus pith edge, uh, maybe just a touch of uh, the gooseberry as well. Well, seeing it side by side uh, with the Bella, you can tell there's a bit more concentration, a bit more oomph, certainly more ripeness. Uh, do I notice the warmth of alcohol? Well, 12.5%, I mean, that's an admirable level for, for Sauvignon Blanc. That's, uh, uh, that's just what you want for a crisp summer wine. And uh, uh, for me, it's a step up. And um, yes, I, I like that. And uh, my, the only thing I maybe um, would say against it is it's a personal favourite of Graham Norton's, this one. So that may or may not put you off it. But uh, tasty wine. Uh, let's see whether the next one is a tasty wine. Uh, Jackson Estate Stitch, uh, Sauvignon Blanc Stitch. I mean, the Stitchbury family um, uh, has been running uh, Jackson Estate for a long time, but I think that they're, they're the original people, uh, John and Joe Stitchbury, blah, 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 and I think there's a Warwick Stitchbury or something. Um, uh, but there's also, I think the Jackson family was involved there somewhere, hence the name Jackson Estate. Uh, I all really ought to swat up on my new Marlborough wine history because I'm sure it's fascinating. Anyway, let's just dig in and see where we get to. Feels like it's going to be a fuller, weightier wine. Um, and the fruit's gone maybe, yeah, it's still got a touch of those citrus, but it's going into the maybe the plums, even a um, bit of peach, a bit of nectarine in there. Still feels like it's going to have this uh, herby restraint this, and, and this touch of mineral going through it. Um, smells good. The in vivo smelt good too. There's a rich juiciness about that that I, I really like. Um, sometimes Sauvignon can be a Chauvignon, that sounds Sean Connery like, sometimes Sauvignon, sometimes Sauvignon can be a bit of a shrieky wine, uh, but here 
It's got the it's got it's got the uh, it's got the backbone. It's got the bite of citrus and maybe green apple. But um, to flesh it out, it's got uh, yeah this warmer peachier edge. And I don't know whether they've done quite a bit of Lee's contact there, but it seems to have got more texture uh, than the Invivo. So maybe I mean they're, 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 I find them both very tasty. Maybe the Invivo is the lunchtime one, and this is the one that um, uh, when it gets to uh, early evening and you think, oh, where's me cardi? Maybe, maybe that's when you dig into the stitch like that. Um, next two are 2010. So the first one is Marlborough, and uh, this is Forest uh, Sauvignon 2010, and quintessential Marlborough. It says. I think these guys also do a, a low alcohol one. Is it called the Doctors? Um, but um, anyway, this is the regular alcohol, weighing in at 13%. I think the stitch was 13% too. Interesting. It's a year older, and it's. Um, uh, whereas the, uh, the the stitch has got this this roundness and richness with the uh, body and, uh, and and classic Sauvignon minerally backbone. Here, um, it feels like some of that uh, zing and freshness has gone, and it's gone entered into a slightly sweaty pea poddy um, middle age. It's weird how uh, Sauvignon from Marlborough ages is because it goes a bit a bit funny in the middle, and you think has someone put some tin pea juice in here. Uh, that's how I feel, uh, feel like it is at the moment, um, so not sure how this is going to be. Yeah, it's a bit angular, pea pod, green pepper. Certainly can't fault, can't fault it for concentration, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, um, I, would, I would rather have caught that about a year ago, and I don't know whether someone who was um, sending me this was supposed to send the 2011 rather than 2010. It's okay, uh, but uh, the two 2011s rather show it up. Let's see whether this one, final one is shown up, because uh, this is a slightly different beast. Um, these the first four have all been unoaked, but uh, the Gladstone Vineyard Reserve, um, Sophie's Choice 2010, um, is uh, barrel fermented and uh, aged in barrel for a bit as well. Uh, and it's named Sophie after, uh, I was reading the back label earlier, after our golden retriever who was with us for 14 years. Blah, blah, blah. She chased birds under the Sauvignon Blanc nets, ate the fruit that fell from the crusher and sat patiently under the tables of the customers at the cafe. Uh, probably highly Ill illegal in terms of health and safety in the UK, but um, obviously permitted in, uh, in Gladstone. So the oak throat shows through in this smokiness and there's a slight toasty edge too. Um, it's got similar, what well, they call the green pepper and pea pod that uh, the, the forest had. Um, but um, uh, it, they're being slightly, those types of flavours are being slightly reined in by this, um, uh, by this framework of oak. It's by no means an, an over-the-top oaky wine, but the oak is there. Yeah, just sort of constraining everything. Uh, what, whereas uh, with, with some of these, um, it, they, they feel like wines that as soon as you crack open the screw cap, they'll be at their peak there. This feels more like one of those where you almost want to decant it even. And there's a sweet creaminess there from the oak. I mean, it's, um, um, personally, I, um, I tend to like my uh, Sauvignon from Marlborough unoaked. The one, the one, uh, what, there's one wine that I, I do like, it's called uh, Dog Point Section 94, um, where the way in which they handle the oak is quite different from here. I think they use much older oak and they give it quite a lot more time in, uh, in barrel, uh, and that's Marlborough rather than, rather than uh, the Wairarapa region. But um, here it feels like it's, it's, it's slightly a, too clean a wine has gone into the barrel. And uh, it, so you've got, you've got, yes, you've got the toastiness. Yes, you've got this, this slightly pristine wine. Uh, I'd prefer it just to be a little dirty and have a bit more grit under its fingernails. It's good, but um, favourites here are the Stitch and the In Vivo, with the Stitch probably having, the, uh, uh, having just about the edge. Uh, Bella, I mean that's interesting for um, for those looking for uh, lower alcohol wines, but um, pretty good lineup of wines anyway. Even, even the worst of these, I wouldn't mind a glass or two of. And it's June here at the moment, and there are clouds in the sky, and there's rain around, and uh, so maybe it's not the perfect weather, but um, I live in hope. See you soon.